Hi, it's Pekka, Robot Framework Creator. On this video, we are going to learn how to create data-driven test cases with Robot Framework. Let's get to it. Here we have a ready-made test case for a simple logging page. It uses Robot Framework as a keyword-driven framework. We, are, we have the test case created from keywords like open browse to login page, type in username, that are created here in a separate resource file. This approach works very well when we have a simple workflow like, like here, but it doesn't work anymore so well if we need to have a lot of test cases that are very similar. For example, if you want to test the same login application, login, login page, um, so that you cannot lo can log in with invalid username and password, we, are not, we, we, are, we want to have more than one test case. We want to have one test case possibly for like an invalid username, another one for invalid password, both being invalid or username or password being empty. So more than one. In that case, what we could of course do is that we could have a, have a lot of test cases that look like this, but then there would be a lot of duplication, and also it would be hard to see what is the difference between all those very similar looking test cases. So typically in this kind of scenarios, it's much better to switch into data-driven mode. So let's see how that works in practice. We start by creating a new file. We could create the, this test case in the same file, but I think it's better to have a new one. These are slightly different test cases, so I'll create a new file called invalid.robot for test cases for invalid logging. What I do here in the very beginning is that I take the existing resource file into use because we are going to need those keywords here anyway. So I'll add a resource import here and uh, I'll take the resource like that. Then I start creating test cases. We want to have one test case for invalid username. So let's, let's do that. And before thinking too much how it's going to be implemented, let's write some more. We want to have another one like invalid password, then another one for both being invalid, then empty username, empty password, and both being empty. Of course, we could have more modest cases like uh, special characters, so very long usernames and passwords and so on, but I think these are adequate for our demonstration purposes. So six test cases, currently without any kind of implementation, so let's start adding, adding something here. Let's look at first this uh, first one, invalid username. As I already mentioned, what we could do is that we could copy this ex test, existing test case, modify it slightly, and uh, be, be run with that, then use the same approach with all the others, but it would add a lot of duplication. So let's not do that. Let's instead create a new high-level keyword that does take the username and password, in, password as arguments and validates that logging with those doesn't succeed. Let's uh, assume that we would have it yet already now and call it, and the keyword would be named invalid login. We could then, in this case, call with two arguments. First, the username that is invalid. And then the second argument is the password that we want to be valid. So now in our case, it's mode. Of course, in typical cases, you wanted this password to be a variable or something like that. But in our case, we always have this hard-coded valid password for certain users, of this mode. Okay, so we need to create this keyword now, this invalid login. We have this resource file where we could create it. But in this, this case, I believe it's better to create that keyword in the same file as our test cases are, because this is not something that can be reused by other test case files. And also, this is going to be relatively uh, high level and easy to understand. So it's not going to add, uh, it's not going to make this file more complicated. So let's have the keyword here. We have a, a, a keyword section, and then we create a keyword in what login, and uh, we need to make it as a two arguments. First being the username, and the second one then password. So now this keyword gets username and password as an argument, and we want to get into the login page, type those in, submit them, and validate that we don't get in, in this case. We could open the login page here as first step of this keyword, but I actually believe that in this case, it's better to open the login page as a test setup. 
and then close it as test teardown. So that in this new keyword, we only need to concentrate on trying to log in with these credentials. We could add test setup and test teardown for each test case, but it's easier to add it for all test cases here in the settings section. So what we do here is that we use test setup setting and then use our existing uh, login, sorry, open browser to login page keyword. So that's the keyword we have already in the resource file. We use it then with, with the valid, um, valid login test case already. And then as test teardown, what we do is that we just close the browser. And that's it. So now each test case is going to automatically um, open the browser to the login page and then at the end close it regardless did the test case succeed or not. So now in this invalid login, we, are, we know that we are on a test case, uh, oh, sorry, on the login page. So what we need to do is that we just type in the username in there and we already had keyword for that as well here. So we just need to use that type in username and uh, what we want to type is the username that was given here to this keyword as an argument. We also type in password. That's another keyword that we had. We use that and then we submit those credentials. So now we type in the username and password, submit them, and now we need to validate that we are not on the login page. This is of course something where we need a new keyword. We don't have any existing keyword for validating that we didn't, that login didn't succeed. So we need to create one. Well, technically we didn't even need to create one. We could just validate that here, but I, can, I prefer having a new keyword here called um, uh, error page should be open. It's uh, consistent with the existing welcome page should be open. So this keyword now needs to be created. This keyword I think belongs rather to the resource file than here. So I'll, I'll add it there. It's not really a big deal where it is, but I think this is something that might be reusable also elsewhere. And also it's kind of consistent because we had the welcome page should be open here. So that we can also use, also have this one in the same place. This uh, web, web page has very high testability. So it's the name, uh, page is named different. So it's very easy to validate that where we are. So now we just use title should be error page and that should be it. Now we should be able to run it. And the first test case hopefully succeeds. So let's see, robot. And uh, again, it's in the login folder and invalid and it should run. It should run all the test cases now. The, the first one should succeed. If I didn't make, make any stupid typos, apparently I didn't. The rest fail simply because they are empty. So now we, what, we need, what we need to do is that we want to use the same keyword here with all the other test cases. Before we do that, let's make one syntax change here. So uh, what's, what we can do is that when we have a test case like this, we don't need to have the the keyword below the test case name. We can also have the test keyword already on the same same row like this, which is kind of nice here because our test cases are very compact. So what we can do is that we can then just continue here invalid login and uh, here mode and then, uh, sorry, not mode, valid username is of course demo and then invalid as an argument. So we can now in very kind of compact manner, go through all the test cases and add needed username and password combinations. When adding this empty username and password combination, one thing is to notice that this won't work. So I I cannot have invalid login and then just mode here uh, and leave the field like for the username totally empty because in robot framework syntax these keywords and arguments are, se are separated by spaces. So here it's just a lot of spaces. So now at the moment this invalid login is just getting one argument. We need to have something there and I think the best approach is to have use the built-in variable empty that exists automatically and that's that has a value of empty string so that will work. Then we have a um, empty password. 
now we type in the username and then again um, now we use empty variable with the password and then finally the last one so now we have six, six test cases and we should be able to run them as well and if I didn't make typos they should now all succeed there are two problems with this current setup. One is that this is slightly slow. Each test case is opening a browser again. Uh, what's, what's much better approach is opening the browser just once, but that's something that we'll actually con cover in a, uh, in a separate video later. But the other problem that we have here is something that we are going to tackle still here. Um, the problem is that we are repeating this invalid looking keyword which each of each of these test cases there are some and which is kind of annoying. It's already now quite okay. We have a compact compact um, syntax here. We can easily see what what's the difference between all these uh, th uh, different kind of iterations. But this invalid looking keyword kind of is annoying. So robot framework has a feature to really move from keyword driven approach um, to data driven approach. Uh, and, which is, and it is functionally is called a template. So what we can do is that we can actually all to get totally remove this invalid login here. So I I'll, I'll remove the whole block like this. And then what I use instead is that I add here a test template and use invalid login as a test template. What this means is that now each test case is going to always use that keyword and it's going to use it with arguments that are provided here. So this is the same exact same thing as earlier, just much more compact and uh, nice looking, no, no uh, repeating of the same keyword. What we can still also do is that we can add um, headers here if we want to. So this makes it a bit more nicer, so we can use username here. And password here, maybe add some one more space here as well. So now it's like really nice and compact column structure where we can see this is a username and this is a password. And it should still succeed. This still leaves us with the problem that it's a bit slow because every time we are opening the, test, uh, the browser again and again. But as I've already mentioned, we are going to tackle that in a subsequent video. What we've learned here so far in this video is that we can easily use robot framework also for data-driven testing. And we used how we've learned how to use this uh, test template setting to make it really fluent syntax, also, uh, even though robot framework itself is a keyword-driven framework. Thanks for watching and see See us in the next video where we are going to look at suite setups and how to make how to how we can use those to make this execution faster.